Hi, everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the skin senses. Um, and uh, I've got a PowerPoint I will share with you so that we can kind of go through that. So if you want to take out the um, graphic organizer that you have um, that talks about the, the skin senses, um, and you can follow along here. So the skin senses are considered the cutaneous senses, and uh, they are divided up into touch, temperature, and pain. Um, now, in the past, I've done an activity where I have asked people, like, if you could give up one of your senses, if you had to give up one of your senses, which would you do? Um, and it's interesting when people say, oh, I would give up the, my skin senses. I don't want to feel pain anymore or ever. Um, the thing is, it probably is one of the most important senses we have. If you can't feel pain, then sometimes you don't know that there's a problem. So if you, um, you know, can't feel pain, you may not feel that pain in your side that tells you you have appendicitis and that you need to go to the hospital. You may not know that you have broken your ankle uh, or, or your leg uh, or, or whatever that might be. So it, it really is an important sense that we have. So we're, we're gonna look first at the sense of touch. Um, this is considered the, the sense of pressure. So um, we have, uh, receptors that are located around the roots of our hair cells, all that hair on our arms and our bodies um, have a purpose um, and, and, and it's a, it has to do with our sense of touch. Um, so uh, we have certain places on our body where our sensitivity to touch is higher, um, like in our hands. Uh, if you saw the a little fun fact on the cl on classroom today, um, it, it says if, if our hands were as big as, as the earth and we could hold the earth in our hands, we have so many sensory receptors in our hands that we could actually feel the difference between cars and houses. That's how sensitive uh, our, our hands are to a sense of touch. And, and that's an evolutionary thing. We, we've had to be able to do that to make tools and to do um, all of these things in order to survive. Um, however, there might be other places where um, we don't have as many sensory receptors or, or, or pressure receptors um, because we don't need them there. So, um, you know, maybe on our leg or have, have anybody um, ever done that weird elbow thing where like if you, okay, this is going to sound crazy. Like if you lick somebody's elbow when they're not watching or not seeing you, then they, they can't feel it because we don't have a lot of pressure receptors in our elbow. We don't need them there. Um, so just to kind of show you, this is a little, uh, model. It's, a, it's backwards. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can change my video so that it's not backwards for you. Um, I think I have to change my mirror setting here. No longer, whoop, there we go. No longer mirroring. Um, so if you look at this little model of the human skin, um, the, the pressure receptor on here is uh, number seven. So this, this little thing right here, that's the pressure receptor. So you can see it's kind of by the root of our hair on our skin. And um, that's where we're gonna sense whether someone is touching us or not, whether that's a sense of pressure or not. Okay. So back to the PowerPoint and we're gonna talk about temperature. So temperature, we actually have two separate uh, senses for temperature or receptors uh, for temperature, uh, neurons under our skin, and we have one for cold and we have one for hot. Um, and if you remember the messages that are sent by neurons, um, it, it's not like one is gonna be like stronger or, or softer. Remember those neural impulses, it has to do with how fast they're sent. So something might be a little bit warm um, and detected by that heat sensor. And that's gonna be a very slow message being sent uh, by your neurons. Uh, whereas if it is really, really hot, those are gonna be really fast. Um, and that's going to tell your brain that it's, it's very intense. So that information, just like our sense of touch, is being sent to our spinal cord through these neurons from the spinal cord to the brainstem to the thalamus. Remember that thalamus, that is so important. The thalamus is the, the message center. It's taking all of these sensory messages in and deciding where it goes. So for the thalamus, 
uh, or I'm sorry, for the sensory messages, those are being sent to the parietal lobe in your brain. Um, and then pain is the last one. And pain um, is communicated through prostaglandins. These are fatty acids. They're, they stimulate those receptors and they send pain messages to the brain. So when you take, for example, an aspirin or a Tylenol or an Aleve or whatever it is you might take, what that does is that stops the production of those prostaglandins so that um, the, it just, it dulls the pain. So the message can't be sent that you're in pain. It doesn't mean that it heals whatever is wrong with you. So um, if you have um, a swollen ankle and there's a lot of pain in your ankle and you take some aspirin um, to, to help with the pain, it's not going to heal your ankle. It's your ankle, ankle's not getting better because you took aspirin. The only thing that's happening is you're not getting the message that it, you're in pain anymore. Um, these are important. They warn us of damage to our bodies, um, but pain isn't limited to the sense of, of, of touch, the skin, excuse me, the skin senses. Um, pain can be caused by a stimulation of any of the senses. So sometimes you get really, really bright light, can give you a headache, you can feel pain as a result. Loud sounds, you go into a, a, a concert, like have you ever watched like little kids in the parade when the fire engines go by and the lights are flashing and all of a sudden they throw that siren out and they're covering their ears because it's painful to hear. Even eating really, really hot peppers or hot food can be painful. So um, pain is not uh, something that's, restricted just to uh, our skin senses. It happens in all of our senses. And again, um, if I'm going to show you the, my little model here, um, uh, you can see the pain sensor is number four on here. And you can see how close to the surface, sorry, close to the surface that is, number four. Um, and that's gonna be uh, where you receive that pain message and it's sent to, um, to the thalamus, up to the brain. Um, and then on here, you can also see the hot and cold sensors. That's number five and number six. So um, number five right here, number six over here, um, those are your hot and cold receptors. So um, that's where we get the message whether something is hot or cold. They're just completely separate receptors. So the last thing when we talk about the skin senses uh, has to do with the gate theory of pain, which I think is a very interesting theory. And I don't know how many of you um, have experienced this before. Um, when my kids were little, I remember them going to the babysitter and you know they'd bump their head uh, and uh, the babysitter would say, okay, well, just, just rub it. And so you know they would be rubbing their head where they, and I always thought, well, that's kind of weird. Um, but how many times do we do that? If you bump your elbow on something or your funny bone, you just, you kind of rub that spot. Why is that? Why do we do that? That's the gate theory of pain. So only so many messages can be sent at one time um, to our brain. And so if we have a, something happen that's painful, if we, um, basically we, we create more information to be sent. So by touching the area, it's all of a sudden now, instead of just the pain message, it has the pressure, it has the temperature, it's all these messages. And it can't, it can't send all of those messages at one time. And so um, only a, a few can get through the gate. Uh, so um, now all of a sudden, it's instead of all of this pain, you're also feeling some of the temperature and, and some of the pressure. And so you're flooding that switchboard. And so you the pain message is limited a little bit. So that's the, um, that's the flood, flood this way, that's the gate theory of pain. Okay, so I wanna talk, um, last thing, I just wanna talk about the body senses. So when we talk about the body senses, um, these are the senses that give us information about movement, uh, about orientation in space, where, you know, where are my arms? How am I positioned? Um, and then balance as well. So we have the two senses. We have the uh, vestibular sense and the kinesthetic sense. So I'm actually gonna skip down and talk about the kinesthetic sense first. Um, this is our position and motion of our body parts. 
This is detected by receptors that are embedded in our muscle fibers and our joints. So we know, you know if, that I have my arm up or that I'm waving my hand or that I'm nodding my head. We know that movement because um, those receptors in our muscles are telling that to us. And so we're able to know that because of that. Um, the vestibular sense is our balance and our orientation. So that is, um, that's telling us whether we're upright. That tell, tells us whether we are moving or not. Um, if you have, if you've ever heard of vertigo, vertigo has to do with that vestibular sense. Something is happening in those um, semicircular canals in your ear that makes it really, really confusing as to whether you're moving, whether you're not moving, and then as a result, you get dizzy. So it has to do with those semicircular canals, um, which I am going to show you in the ear model. I know you guys are excited about these models. Um, so um, if you look on the ear model, the semicircular canals uh, are right here. And you can see kind of that they are in all different positions. So you have one going up and down, you have one going sideways, you have one kind of coming a different way. Um, this is uh, where you get that information about where, like what your body position is in. Um, so um, the auditory nerve um, will send messages to the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve, and then those go to your medulla in the temporal lobe. Um, this is where if you get car sick, um, that's why. It's because of those semicircular canals. Um, you, have, you have some fluid in there and you have these little tiny hair fibers that are, are telling you what the movement is in, uh, in that fluid. And so um, when you're in a car and you, your vestibular sense is telling you you're moving because it can feel it through those, that, that motion, but then maybe you're focused on something. Like if you read a book, I can't read in the car, I get sick um, because you're looking at something that is not moving. So your eyes are telling you you're not moving, your ears are telling you you are moving, and then that just makes you sick. It just confuses your system. So that's what, uh, that's what your body says it's gonna tell you. Okay, so what I would like you to do today is I would like you to do a little experiment. Um, if you're watching this from home, um, you can do this on uh, your parent, anybody that happens to be around, uh, somebody that, that you can find if you can't get it done until you get back to school, then that's fine too. So you're going to start by um, actually reflecting on which senses you think are going to be um, most sensitive or which parts of your body. So let me see if I can find... Um, the actual, it's not gonna let me out of this. Oh, there it is. Um, there we go, touch it. So your, which, which is more sensitive and why? The finger, the arm, the hand, the neck, or the cheek? Please do that first. Then you're going to actually go through the, the lab or the experiment, and then you're gonna reflect on whether you did it, whether you predicted correctly. No points for if you got it correct or not. Um, I just want to know, like, why did you feel that way? And, and why do you think you were right? Or why do you think you were wrong? Um, so you just need a paper clip or something like that. Um, and then uh, we're gonna do this little experiment and uh, reflect on that and share it. So um, that's it. Again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me and um, I will see you when you get back.